Warning. Listener discretion is advised. I just had a vision. <laughs> you think I'm full of shit. <laughs> Hey, what's up, you guys? I know it's been a very, very long time. I'm sorry about it. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. So much has gone on that I I think you deserve, like, 50 million episodes before... I don't... I don't know what... I don't know what's going on right now. I really don't know what's going on in the world right now. RBG dies, and then we get this new bitch. The Republicans don't want to be fair... And let the next elected president pick the Supreme Court justice because gay people are getting married and killing babies. And uh, it's just too much for me to handle right now. And then, of course, I do work. Work is priority right now in tandem with school because, of course, you know, without working, I can't pay for school and I need school because <laughs> I'm not working where I'm working forever. And, um, yeah, just life is busy right now and crazy. Book number two is going to come out next month. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and say that here on the podcast. <laughs> I'm going to say that here on the podcast. Everyone else who follows me on all of the socials and isn't listening to the, this podcast can suck it. Um, please buy that on Amazon so I don't have to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't like my job, it's just no human being on earth. No human being on earth. Not a goddamn one likes working. We do it because capitalism. <laughs> we we work so that we don't starve and die from exposure of the elements. Anyway, we're going to talk about being psychic today. I've been promising you this for a while now. I, every time, every time I'm getting ready to do this episode, every single motherfucking time I get ready to do the psychic episode, something in the world goes on and I have to do a completely different episode. It's not fair to y'all. I know. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Also, <laughs> side note, completely unrelated, Shout out to my mother, <laughs> who says that she listens to my podcast in order to go to sleep at night. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know I was so boring. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, that maybe I should remarket my podcast that way. <laughs> I should rebrand it as the, you know, Fonzie talks about random shit you don't care about until you softly and gently fall asleep. <laughs> Anyway, let's um let's talk more about me being psychic after the commercial break. Let's pay some bills. A few people have asked me while I was plugging this show for the past few weeks or so, how do you make a podcast even? And there are a few ways to get from point A to point B with podcasting, but my favorite answer is always Anchor. Anchor is a free podcast hosting site, and it takes all of the work and hassle out of the equation so you can just focus on content. And I like that because I'm a busy person. I have one of those grown men 401k jobs and I don't have a lot of time for all that extra stuff. I like to use my MacBook to access Anchor. Apple, please sponsor me. <laughs> but there is also a mobile app that works just as well. And you'll have everything you need to record, edit, and distribute your podcast right at the tip of your fingers. Anchor will also automatically distribute your podcast to just about everywhere podcasts can be heard including Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. And you can use the RSS feed that they will provide you with to fill in the blanks if you find any. Unlike some podcasting networks that usually require you to have thousands of active listeners before they'll even consider monetizing your show, I have zero listeners right now this very second, and I'm already able to monetize and make money on my very first download through Anchor. So if you've ever been curious about starting a podcast and it just seemed too technical and out of reach to achieve, you should definitely check out Anchor. You can download their free mobile app from whatever app store you have access to or by going to anchor.fm forward slash ask anything. I repeat, anchor.fm forward slash ask F-O-N-Z-I-E anything. I'm positive you're going to love it. Okay, guys. 
Also, something very important I want to add into this episode before we get started on my, um, you know, aforementioned topic. If you have not registered to vote in Texas, you're shit out of luck. The deadline to register to vote in Texas was Monday, October 5th. Sorry about it. (laughs) Y'all have been told for a while now. I have many, many, many states. In fact, all five of this election season's battleground states, I have someone listening to this podcast from. So, go out, find out what the deadline to register to vote in your state is, and then go and register to vote. It is so important. Our only civic duty and responsibility as Americans in reciprocation for the freedoms that we are afforded as human beings, our birthright as American, the only thing we have to do is vote. It's our only civic duty. Make sure you go out there and vote. It's really important. (laughs) I'm going to talk more about the election in another episode. (laughs) I'm going to do my election day episode the week before the Monday before election day. It's, it's really important guys. It really is. I can't stress this enough, but anyway, that's not what we're talking about right now. Y'all want to hear about me and some spooky shit. So that's what we're going to talk about. Now I would like to preface this episode by saying if something crazy happens October 6th, because I finally uploaded this episode after months, well two, I don't know why I'm being extra. After two months of trying to get it out, if something crazy in the world, like fucking Yellowstone explodes, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it, 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 it was time. <laughs> I think Yellowstone exploding would be the perfect ending to this shit whole garbage dumpster fire year. Anyway... I'm going to do it fast and loose this episode. You're going to hear shit in the background. I don't give a fuck. It's 8.59 p.m. It's almost 9 o'clock Monday when I should have had this up at midnight on Monday. I don't know what to tell y'all. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. Not enough people listen to this podcast. Not enough people buy my books for me to not have to go to work and shit. (laughs) I don't know what to tell y'all. I have to I have to balance it out somehow. (laughs) So. Psychic. I think this is going to sound cliche, um, but I'm going to start at the beginning and with the basics. This is me playing with a water bottle, by the way. The, ooh, I wonder if I could do some ASMR. No, not with this episode. That's going to be weird. And um, y'all barely like listening to my voice speak regular. I don't know how y'all feel about me whispering in here. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm fucking retarded. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> Serious. Yeah, I... This is going to seem cliche. But I'm going to start at the beginning. And I'm going to start with the basics. And then we're going to move up and out. And we're going to develop. And the story is... I'm going to bring some receipts too. Okay, you guys? I'm not just going to tell y'all, Oh, I'm psychic. And then not have anything to back that up with. <laughs> So we're going to talk about when I first noticed what type of psychic I am. Because people think that being psychic is everything that you've seen on TV. People think that being a medium is a psychic. Of course, there are psychic mediums. Of course, there are intuitives who are not mediums. It's it's an entire umbrella term that society is inaccurately put over people who are, you know, kind of able to tap into the metaphysical and the parapsychological fields of our naturalized reality. I feel like the word psychic has gotten so gummed up and people have become so misinformed about what it means to be psychic based on pop culture's influences through movies and TV shows that the real core of what it means to be psychic is kind of lost. That that information and that knowledge of what it, the factual knowledge of what it truly means to be psychic is lost to people who might dismiss the the existence of psychics, the validity of psychics. 
I totally get skeptics. I'm not judging you. <laughs> I am a very show me kind of person. I could have been from Missouri, I swear. But by the grace of God, I was born here in Texas. Yes, ma'am. Anyway, <laughs> I, if I couldn't do what I do, I wouldn't believe in it either. I really wouldn't. And that can be verified by the fact that to this day, whenever I get something right, even I here and there will be like, oh my gosh, remember? And then, and do you remember when I said, no, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm doing, dude, I'm going crazy right now. I will lose my shit sometimes. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that gif with, um, that cutie from Parks and Recreations where his mouth is open in surprise and he's pointing. Like, that that happens to me sometimes. I will freak my own self out. Like, god damn, I really got that right. <laughs> but I do, I've always felt this way. Um, it, I'm going to start with what type of psychic I am. There are many types. There are different types of psychic. There are psychics who channel their intuition through different means. For example, I am claircognizant. There's claircognizant, clairaudient, clairvoyant, clairsentience, clair... There's all kinds of clairs. There's... There's a, there's about five of them, and they all involve your senses. I am claircognizant. It is a clear knowing. Claire being the root term and word for clear, and cognizant of course, being related to brain function, knowing, understanding, um, comprehension, etc. I have always just known things with no discernible proof, evidence, the ability to have been taught that, to have learned something. I have always just known deep in my gut. My gut <laughs> is where... and. You, I think that when I say gut, people visualize, you know, my actual stomach. But I, it's more like the mesentery when I say my gut. But, yeah, when when my gut tells me something is up, something is up. And uh, whatever my gut tells me, I always follow it because I'm usually right. And I'm usually the one person in the back when everyone's like, who could have known? And I'm like, mm. <laughs> right here <laughs> and I'm not a I told you so person but I'm a mm -hmm person you know what I mean <laughs> I'll sit there in the corner with my eyes rolled and throwing shade like I ain't gonna say the word but you know who said something like that I don't know who it was maybe you can remember <laughs> I will I will be kind of shady about it I'm not an I told you so person but I will look at someone up and down and remind them with my eyes <laughs> That I said X, Y, Z. <laughs> but yeah, I'm claircognizant. I have developed a, a clairsentience through claircognizance. Clairsentience is a clear feeling where you, like let's say you, your hands start feeling warm or or something feels like it's on fire. Like, sometimes my feet will get hot flashes out of nowhere. And then, you know, the next thing I see on Facebook somewhere is a picture of a fire or something. California's burning again. <laughs> Global warming. <laughs> or, I don't I don't know how to explain clairsentience. Um, clairsentience is also emotion-based. So, feeling through emotions, like, I can feel energies... If someone is, let's say I walk into my friend Sandy's office and Sandy is not having a good day, but she has not told me anything. I haven't seen her up until this very moment. Sandy is always happy. Sandy is always nice. Sandy is always very smiley. I walk into her office. A normal person wouldn't know the difference. She's smiley. She's happy. She's saying, good morning. How are you? All of the other good stuff. But a psychic person would walk into that room where everything seems the same from yesterday or the day before. But notice that there's some sort of difference in the way the air 
tastes or the way uh, some sort of difference in the density of the air as they pass through the room almost like um with me i kind of feel it like uh, like radio i tell people all the time i get auditory or visual messages kind of like radio i get people's feelings like radio i i just know things <laughs> kind of like someone sent me that fact or knowledge through a radio system i don't know how to explain it um except radio <laughs> i just kind of did um so there's clairvoyance which is clear sight which is kind of like a second sight where you oh oh okay i want to do this exercise with y'all seriously i want y'all to close y'all's eyes i want y'all to think of just black i just want everything in your mind to go black for a split second pause this until you figure that out <laughs> it might take a second for some of you and it might not take any time at all if you're not that bright <laughs> or you don't have anxiety and your brain isn't going like a rolodex spinning 50 miles an hour <laughs> anyway you can pause right here until you get empty and now that you're empty and you have no thoughts there's nothing else outside of your brain except the sound of my voice. I want you to picture an apple. I want you to picture an apple, a red apple, a red apple on top of the counter. But don't focus on the counter. Focus on the apple. Maybe the, the counter is background. We don't have to worry about the counter. So this apple is red. This apple is fresh looking this apple it has that little white part where the sun hits it and it almost doesn't even look red in that area but you know it is it's just a light refraction from the shiny surface of this apple red apple on a counter okay now do you recognize that in your mind how faint that apple exists almost as if it was a whisper of a shadow of a photo of an apple i want you to open your eyes and i want you to picture now that apple on your bed when i get visual messages that is how faint they are almost kind of like an apple in front of you that isn't there physically, but in your mind <laughs> and through your mind's eye, that apple exists in the faint, faint parts of your imagination's vision. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a hologram almost. You can almost put your hand right through it because it's not really there, but your mind is seeing it there. That is how very faint I get visuals, visual messages. Um, I'm going to do another exercise with you. I want you to find somewhere quiet, and if you can't, block out everything else. And then I want you to picture yourself, or imagine yourself saying the word banana. Don't say it with your mouth, say it with your head, say it with your mind. Say it with your inner voice, your inner dialogue. Some of you <laughs> are weirdos and don't have an inner dialogue. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're going to have to skip this part. But in your mind, I want you to say the word banana without moving your lips. Did you feel how it almost didn't exist when you said banana in your head? Did you feel how, did you feel how for a split second... It was almost as if, if you had not paid attention to that deep inner back, back of the room voice that said banana, you could have missed it. That is how I hear auditory signs and symbols. That is how I get auditory messages. In the same faint, faint voice. Faint, almost non-existent, almost... If someone was caught 
in the average day-to-day -day hustle and bustle of all of the tasks and stuff that you got to do while you move through the day, an average person wouldn't focus on that tiny itty bitty thought that is a shadow of a whisper of the word banana in your mind. The average person would just like completely mow over it because they got other shit to do. But I don't just believe that those things are in me. I don't just believe that those things are in me alone. I don't think I'm the only person out there. I know in my soul that everybody is clear audience, everybody is clear sentient, everybody is everybody is psychic in a way. Because being psychic is a muscle that you have to develop over time. Even I to this day, someone who who's known they were psychic since they were a young young child i knew I, w I knew i was different very very young to this day i have to actively attempt to stretch that muscle to pay attention to faint whispers of a shadow of a voice in the back of my head one of the ways that through clear audience it's kind of difficult to discern whether that's how i get auditory messages um with clairsentience i can it's kind of like what you would think being empathic is where you pick up on other people's emotions like radio being clairsentient is basically empathy but it does have this there's a degree of unknowing okay and let me explain because someone who is empathic, someone who's sympathetic to people's pain, you are sitting in front of that person, you, you see them destroyed, and you feel sorry for them. You connect with them because you know that they are having a bad day. You know that they are sad. You know that they are depressed. You know that they are angry because you can see it. They're right in front of you. They are allowing you to see them vulnerable. That is average everybody that is everybody's empathy that is everyone's you know sympathy everyone feels sympathy or empathy for someone when they can visibly actively see that person in pain or in emotional distress when it becomes psychic when being empathic or clairsentient becomes psychic is when that person is not allowing you to visibly see them broken and torn apart and destroyed or angry they are pretending everything is fine which is why i brought up that sandy lady <laughs> sandy would let you know and this isn't a sandy i actually know i just used the name from someone i do know <laughs> but this is a complete example that i just made up and used someone someone real's name a, a real person's name for but this theoretical sandy person she's not letting you know that she's had a bad day maybe her and her husband got into a fight before she came to work maybe she was up all night studying for a test maybe her kid kept her up because her kid has pneumonia or some shit and the she was able to have her mother stay home with the baby so she could come to work or something you would never notice unless she told you when it becomes psychic, when empathy and sympathy become psychic and turn into clairsentience, is when the person you are getting vibes from would not let you know that what they are feeling is what they're feeling because they're completely masking that with every person's <laughs> internal need to be fine. Sandy, or this theoretical person, is completely hiding the fact that they're having a bad day but you can still as a psychic clairsentient person pick up that something isn't right because it's in the air i tell people i can taste it i, I smell it i can smell something on you it's not an actual scent <laughs> but that is how my gut and my my mind's eye perceive those radio signals <laughs> and radio signals of course being uh, a dramatized representation of what psychic messaging and how I receive those is represented. So, so that's clairsentience. There's one called clairaliens where you get smell messages. A lot of psychic mediums get 
smell messages, like when they're doing a reading for someone and they'll smell cigarettes on their hands, but they're not a smoker and no one's smoking in the room and no one smoke a cigarette. No one has smoked a cigarette recently, but they'll smell smoke on their hands and they'll ask, was your grandfather a smoker? The fa That smell message, even though there's no reason that there's should be a, a smell of smoke in the room, the fact that that person smells smoke, that is a psychic message to the person through their scent sense. And that is called clairaliance. I do not, well, sometimes, I I think I just have all the clairs, <laughs> because I have gotten smells of perfume out of nowhere, and I'm not anywhere, you know what, I'm going to hold off on that story, because I want to get the details exact for y'all, maybe this will be in a different episode, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to split the psychic episode up into two parts, because I've only explained to you what the clairs are, and it's already almost at 20 minutes long, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I think that I should finish explaining what the clairs are to you, <laughs> I, I should finish, you know, with my analogy of being psychic as an umbrella term, and then we can move on. But yeah, we have clairvoyance, which is clear sight. That's where you see stuff. You have clairaudience, where you get auditory messages, and then clairsentience, where you know you feel feelings, energies, emotions, stuff like that. There's Claire Aliens, where you get the smells, which, um, if you've ever, you know, out of nowhere, smelt your grandpa's cologne, and it was a very distinct, distinct cologne, no one in the room where you are, let's say you're in your office alone, no one's been in your office for about 30 minutes, you're not wearing any kind of, uh, any kind of cologne that smells similar to your grandpa's cologne, and out of nowhere... You smell your grandpa's cologne. He's been dead for 20 years. And it makes you think of your grandpa. That would be a Claire Aliens message. If, you know, you smell roses. And your dead great-grandmother had a rose garden. And you always helped her during the summer in her rose garden. That could be the way that your grand your great grandmother is trying to send a message to you that she's you know she's with you in spirit um there's also Claire Gustin's <laughs> and it's <laughs> it's clear tasting i have no what the i have no idea what the fuck that means <laughs> i i've never experienced it i've never tasted something i've never tasted something psychically I would only assume, I can only assume that this is useful as a skill with psychic mediums when they are trying to figure out how someone died and maybe they taste blood in their mouth. So that leads them to think that X, Y, Z. I don't know. I've never experienced Claire Gustin's. I'm not a Claire Gustin't. I don't even know <laughs> what the pronoun for someone who experiences Claire Claire Gustin's is so I'm not fucking with that one um but there's I guess there would be a that would be a would be example of someone who tastes blood if a person had pneumonia you know when you when you have pneumonia sometimes you cough up blood and that blood tastes in your mouth maybe I don't I, don't, I have no fucking clue I'm not an expert on being psychic I'm just a psychic um, the last one, clear cognizance, which I am primarily, is someone who has a clear knowing. They know in every fiber of their soul. They know it. They have no reason for knowing it. No one told them this stuff. They don't know how they know it, but they have that information within a finger's reach. And <clears throat> they just know it. They don't know how they know it. Whenever I know things, I don't know how I know it. It just 
blah, falls out of my mouth, kind of like vomit. I even tell people when I say things and they're like, how did you know that? Sometimes I'll tell people those weren't my words. <laughs> I didn't know that. I just said it because someone else did and I got it. I picked up on it. Or it's like also having a knowledge of a person or an event that I wouldn't normally be disposed to the knowledge of. Um, sometimes information just pops into my head. Sometimes I'll just know something and I've never looked at a book about it. I've never studied the topic. I've never been to this place, met this person, seen this type of car, been to this country, know anything about the language, but I know something. I just know it. I... <laughs> and it really made me a bit of a nerd in school <laughs> because I knew things that I, I I knew things that I'd never studied before. I knew things that I'd never um thought about <laughs> being interested in. <laughs> but I had that that information hidden within the deep recesses of my of my soul, my gut. And, you know, it, it also could be attributed to an instinct. That's what I tell people. Because people think that when I say I'm psychic, that I'm bullshit, and that I think that I'm Teresa Caputo, the Long Island medium, and that I, <laughs> you know, need to, if I was so psychic, why hadn't I won the lottery yet? And it doesn't work that way. I mean, I'm sure you could try. I'm sure you could try. Um for me, there's an ethic problem. There's an ethical issue with trying to play the lottery being psychic. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know how I know things when I know them, but I do. And when I tell people that it's just a very, 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 very strong instinct, almost as if, you know, a normal person's instinct was based off of something that was set in stone. That is kind of, what it's like for me I and I and I tell people back to what I was saying a second ago whenever people you know ask me why I think I'm psychic or how I know I'm psychic or stuff like that I tell them it, it's not so much that I'm any different than a normal human a normal human being everyone has these proclivities to psychic ability the difference between me and some other person is that I have, over time, fine-tuned that tool available to me as a human being. Every single human being on this planet... I'm going to sound fucking crazy. <laughs> every single fucking... Every human on this planet is psychic. It is bred into us. We've evolved into it. It, <laughs> it is a part of our DNA. It is a part... Is it a... It is a part of our anatomy. It came. It's a default setting. It is a factory setting when they open up the box. <laughs> a person born into this world is psychic. Everyone is. Being psychic is a muscle. Psychic ability is stored within your pineal gland. It, it's a muscle. <laughs> It's kind of like a little organ in your brain where your third eye is. Buddhists knew about it a long time ago. That is why you will see many Buddhists and Asian um, cultured people with a dot on their forehead, jewelry on their forehead, headbands, head wraps, ornating their third eye because we've we been new <laughs> about the third eye for thousands of years. Um, our pineal gland, according to some some reports by fellow psychics, people who've been in the biz a lot longer than me, um, scientists, there really is a pineal gland in our brain about where our third eye is. And according to these scientists and psychics and all of these people doing this research, our pineal gland used to be an actual eyeball. And we had this eyeball way back before we were monkeys in the evolutionary chain. And we use that third eye as a sensory organ, kind of like our eyeballs. But it's what helped us survive, in a way. And over time, we stopped needing that sensory organ. 
our pineal gland. We stop needing our pineal gland as dominantly as the human race evolved because life became easier through innovation. Um, we stopped needing that intuition fed by our pineal glands when we were cavemen because as cavemen, that intuition is what kept us from going a certain route in the night because for whatever reason our gut told us not to when in ra when in reality that route we chose not to take had a pack of wolves at the end it is our intuition as human beings stored and activated through our pineal glands that has helped us evolve and survive as a species and as we've evolved as a species we've evolved away from the use of our pineal glands because through evolution of our human race, we've innovated. You know, nowadays we have TVs, iPhones, <laughs> GPS. We have all the things we need to survive in the world without an intuition. Mothers have a strong intuition because they have this cosmic connection to their children. Almost, almost, I can't even put into words. There, There isn't a word in our popular English lexicon that even skims how connected a mother is to her child. But that intuition slowly bred out of us as we've evolved as human beings because we don't use it. As children, we do. As children, we use that intuition. That intuition helps fuel our learning. Our intuition, <laughs> in tandem with all of the things that we're picking up from the universe around us, because our brains are sponges, we use learning and we use our intuition to feed and cycle how we take in the world. And that is why you will hear people say all the time that children are more connected to uh, spirituality and spirits and stuff like that, and things than things that let the average adult isn't really connected to because a child sees the world through both lenses parapsychologically and metaphysically you know through this mystic kind of spiritual window and then they see the world through the physical logical window that everybody past the age of 8 unless you develop your intuition sees the world through one plus one is two in this window. The sun goes <laughs> around the earth at night in this window. Leaves fall. Gravity exists. The earth is round. <laughs> Water is not wet, but <laughs> fire is hot. <laughs> and things that make sense logically are viewed through that window. And as adults and as teenagers, we slowly grow toward only seeing the world through that very logical window because we've become intelligent in the classical sense. But children and psychics maintain their ability to see the world and perceive the world through the logical window and the parapsychological window. And the clairsentience window, the clairvoyance window, the clairaudience. They, are, they maintain their connection to the other window. So that, I always tell people, Mama raised a survivor. <laughs> and I honestly believe that I maintained my psychic connection and my ability to look through the, through the, the other window. And carry that other window with me through life. Because I knew that if it even helped me 10% survive, <laughs> Mama raised a survivor and that window's coming with me. So upon noticing that I was different and that I knew things that I, I would never have known. And I, I started seeing that as just a God-given tool at my, in, my, in my tool belt to help me get through life. So I developed it. I started paying attention to those things. I pay attention to everything. I notice patterns everywhere. And some people could write off me saying that I'm psychic too. Just the fact that I'm very observant. I notice everything. I remember everything. 
I see everything. You think I don't notice something? I do. (laughs) But I also know that most of that is fueled by my intuition and my inner knowing and my ability to do so based on my understanding that I have to pay attention to the things less noticed. (laughs) I have to look for my messages in the faint voice that the average person would just, you know, sweep to the side. I have to pay attention to the to the small shadow of an apple on a counter that isn't really there. A faint whisper of a shadow of something that, you know, doesn't isn't materially in front of me, but psychically intuition wise that apple is really just a message for something else maybe a teacher of mine is in trouble maybe a, an older teacher of mine died at some point i don't know <laughs> i don't know how i would my symbol for apple is is either a woman or an old teacher or an old person but yeah that's that's kind of what i want to say about just the basics of what it means to be a psychic. Everyone's psychic. <laughs> Only some of us who can... Tr- uh, uh, every every human being has the proclivity to be psychic because everyone comes with a factory intuition ability. Not everyone turns it on when they open themselves up. But it, it's available to all of us. <sighs> if you've ever... If you've ever thought about someone and then your phone immediately rang and it just happened to be that person, that is your psychic intuition telling you, trying to give you a heads up. (laughs) And the average person would just think, oh, it's a coincidence. There are no coincidences when it comes to, when it comes to things like that. There are no coincidences when it comes to those types of correlations. I, I, it happens to me all the time. I will think of someone out of nowhere. Maybe I'm not even, I haven't talked to that person in weeks. I haven't, I haven't seen their Facebook or Snapchat. I have nothing to do with this person for like two or three weeks, maybe a few months. And then out of nowhere, they'll sna- I'll think about them and then they'll Snapchat me seconds later. And of course, as someone who pays attention to signs and symbols, I've now decoded and have been able to say that, you know, whenever I randomly think of somebody, it's because I'm about to get a call or a text. <laughs> and it's got, it got to the point where when we had a house phone at home, and my mother can attest to this, she can tell you that this is real. <laughs> so I'm not just bullshitting and making up some psychic nothing so that I can get views on this podcast. You can ask my mother. Her name is Misty Galvan. You can find her on my Facebook. <laughs> you can ask her. She will tell you that when we had a house phone, like the old timey ones that were hooked up to the wall, there was one phone in the house <laughs> and, you know, no one had their phone with them. No one had their phone it was the phone there was one house phone my mother will tell you if you ask her that it got to the point where i could say i'll get it and then silence for two seconds and then ring 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 (laughs) no reason i would know that that phone was about to ring but that's where it had gotten to because i'd paid attention to the signs and symbols i'd started to flex that muscle and you know look for those signals and pay attention to those messages And everybody can do this. Everybody can do this. The very, very, very first step to beginning to flex that muscle is knowing that that muscle exists. That's step one. Kind of like getting over alcoholism. Step one of AA is admitting you have a problem. In psychic AA or or psychic rehabilitation, a class that I should probably make actually, because I can, I, I've taught a few people around me, but in in psychic one hundred and one, the first step to being able to achieve your maximum psychic potential 
is understanding that as a as a human being you have a god-given right to intuition it is god-given i i understand that your holy book might say not to consort with people who claim to be mediums or psychic because they aren't speaking with anything holy they're actually speaking with the devil and demons but that's not the case with me because I, <laughs> although i am religious and i am catholic and i am buddhist um spiritually anyway and i do um connect myself to voodoo i i don't consort with anything negative i don't ask for and it's not really up to me but i don't i've yet to have a bad i've yet to have a bad experience because i religiously i pray and i keep myself protected through my good lord and savior jesus christ <laughs> Uh, for non-religious psychics, I don't necessarily know how they do it, and I'm not going to pretend to know. I know a lot of people who are, you know, agnostic, and they're psychic, and they, you know, surround themselves with a white, healing, protective light, and they imagine themselves, you know, engulfed in a in a bright white light that keeps the way whatever. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I can only teach you and tell you what I know, <laughs> and I pray. <laughs> to protect myself from anything negative. And um, yeah, that's that's the clear basics. Now, of course, there are... <sighs> you could be a medium. You could be a psychic medium. You could just be psychic. Um, someone who is psychic is not a medium. And someone who is a medium is psychic. Just like I said before about fruits and oranges. Um, I am Claire cognizant and i am clairsentient and i am clairaudient and clairvoyant i am not a medium i've i've tried to flex that muscle it has worked for me here and there sometimes i'll get messages when i'm not trying to i there's a story that i want to tell you later on in this series of episodes about me being psychic that you know would lead someone else to believe that i was uh that I was a medium, but in true honesty, I was just using my psychic abilities, my clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentience, to connect uh, psych psychometry-wise to the remaining energy of that person and, you know, help in whatever way I could, which you'll find out about later. This first episode, <laughs> because we're nearing... 40 minutes <laughs> is going to just be me trying to dispel some myths and tell you the basics. I am psychic. I have receipts. <laughs> um, one of them is my mother. You can ask her. I've been seeing spirits since I was young. I have been knowing things I would not know to save my life <laughs> under normal circumstances. Um, one it one thing that I, oh oh I didn't even tell you about dreams and premonitions and stuff. I have on occasion had a premonition. Mine normally come to me in dreams. Ninety nine percent of the time, if I need a direct message of something to come or something that's happened or something in the present that I'm not connected to, because let's say the person I'm dreaming about that needs help is in Abilene and I am in Hereford, then dreams are the best way for my conscious because I'm, like I said, a very logical person to kind of tone down and allow my psychic subconscious to deliver the message it has to. Um, that that's, that's really what dream, psychic dreams or premonitions are really all about is... Some of us are too type A <laughs> to get the message we need to get. So the only time our our type A right half of the brain logical self isn't dialed in is when we're sleeping because that part of <laughs> that part of our brain knocks out. It's got to recharge. It's got to remember shit for tomorrow. <laughs> it's learning things. It's memorizing things. Our subconscious 
you allow the part of your brain that is anal and logical and... What, what, what is the word I'm looking for? It is evidence-driven and, and information-based fall to the wayside. It, it takes a backseat. It's doing its own thing. And <laughs> the part of our brain that is not completely logical doesn't you know, worry about which window it's viewing the world through is allowed to take a front seat and drive us where we need to go. And that is why a majority of people who wouldn't consider themselves psychic can relate to the fact that maybe they've had a dream or so and it felt like a warning of something. Or maybe they, you know, saw their grandma in a dream and it turns out when they woke up that their grandma had passed. And in the dream, their grandma was saying goodbye, but they didn't understand what that meant because they didn't know <laughs> that their grandmother, while they were asleep, was also, you know, passing in their sleep somewhere else. So everybody... Anyway, it's my clear conviction that everybody is psychic Everyone gets premonitions, <laughs> and where I can sometimes relate to, to the average person when it comes to premonitions is sometimes I don't know if what I'm dreaming is just a dream or if, if what I'm dreaming is something real. And I say that because I have dreams all the time. <sighs> Nowadays, they're all sex dreams because this coronavirus shutdown's gotten me all hot and heavy and heated. <sighs> I wake up in hot sweats in the middle of sex dreams and I'm all kinds of pissed off and agitated. <laughs> but anyway, um, for the longest time before I start decided to take my dream seriously, I would dream in symbols and very abstract ways that would connect in hindsight. Because, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. In hindsight, I would, oh my gosh, that's what that meant. But of course, while I'm dreaming it, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I don't understand. <laughs> Why? I, what's going on? <laughs> and then, you know, come to find out after I'm, while I'm, <clears throat> while I'm living what the, the dream was trying to show me, I start connecting those dots and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's what that meant. <laughs> And a lot of people can relate to that. Uh, when it comes to the dreams, it's so <laughs> it's so right or left and binary to me. If I know a dream is a psychic dream, I know it. <laughs> and if I don't know it's a psychic dream and it was, I'll miss it. <laughs> and then in hindsight, I'm like, ah, that's what that was trying to tell me. <laughs> because there's no telling sometimes. <laughs> I'm sure that not all of my dreams are going to come true and some of them just get to be dreams. But, <laughs> um, yeah, the premonition is a way that the average person can connect psychically when the normal Claire's, their clairvoyance, audience, cognizance are shut off because they're not stretching that muscle Psychics, the psychic messages are going to find their way through. So if they can't get through to you because you're ignoring the signs and symbols that are visually shown to you or you're, ignore, you're ignoring the little voice in the back of your head, then they'll just come to you in a dream. It's whatever. If you're religious or if you are informed by religion, I can tell you that the way that I see it is that, you know, our intuition... <sighs> And this is for the religious people. The rest of you that aren't religious are gonna think aren't religious are gonna think I'm crazy. But I want you to think about intuition as the Holy Ghost trying to guide you. Okay? So and in a, in that sense, being psychic makes a whole hell of a lot of sense because those feelings, those those intentions, those thoughts that lead you to information, signals, visions, um, messages now don't seem so crazy because everyone, I'm, 
I want y'all to, I want y'all to message me. I want y'all to message me and tell me about one time that you'll never forget that you had something freaky happen to you and it all connected in this type of way. And of course you filed it away in the back part of your brain because you didn't want to think about it because it was, it would make you sound crazy if you talked about it. I want to hear about those stories. I won't share them on here unless you give me permission to do so. But I know that every single person listening to this podcast right now has had an instance that logically just didn't make sense. But if you viewed it from a psychic standpoint, made perfect sense. But you didn't tell anyone because you thought people would think you were crazy. (laughs) I want to hear about them. I'm going to tell y'all one right now. And then in the next psychic episode, I'm going to give all the other receipts. But one of my favorite receipts to use and I'm going to change some names for identity reasons. I'm just going to be honest. I'm just going to, I'm just going to use their names. I'm sorry. In hindsight, if you get upset that I'm using your real name, (laughs) uh, you're probably not listening to this podcast anyway, because y'all are busy and y'all have kids and y'all have lives and stuff. Okay. So my best friend, uh, Moran, (laughs) I almost called her Marianne. (laughs) My best friend, Moran, she's from Texarkana, and she's the mother of one of my godchildren, Callie, and she was uh, dating, at the time, she was dating uh, one of my best friend Stormy's mother's friend, Jam. And we were in Amarillo at Devin's house, Devin and Josh, and actually, Devin is a girl, by the way. Whenever I tell this story sometimes, people think that Devin and Josh are a gay couple. And they think it's weird that I, at 16, was staying at a gay couple's house by myself with my sister. Anyway, that's none of their fucking business. They don't need to worry about it. So, (laughs) we're at the house. Uh, We get there. It's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And Jam and Moran are sleeping, you know, very cuddled up, very close together. On this big lazy boy. And. A lot of people didn't like her first day. Like first time they met her. A lot of people didn't like her. I could relate to that. A lot of people didn't like me the first time they met me. But. Actually that's a lie. Everybody loves me when they first meet me. It takes them time not to like me. <laughs> they, anyway. So. You know. A lot of people didn't really get her. The very first few times we interacted with her. Because she was a brand new person. You know. But I. I. I saw something in her immediately and I was like, you know what? You're my friend now. (laughs) And we've, we've become closer than, um, probably, you know, Josh and Devin and I, um, God knows that, you know, we would probably be close if not for the fact that we have our own lives and stuff. But, you know, Moran has made consistent efforts to connect with me over time. So we just, you know, we hit it off and stuff. And I, Moran, always my friend. I was like, you know what? You're my friend. I don't care what they say about you. I like you. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's that's just how I feel. In my, that's what's in my heart. <laughs> and, you know, so we got to know Moran. Um, anyway, fast forward like eight years. I don't know how long I've been out of high school. Fast forward eight years. This is about a year ago. I get a call from Moran. She's really, she's really freaked out. And she tells me that one of our friends was... One of our friends, Timmy, and I'm going to change his name because I don't want him upset. Um, One of our friends, Timmy, had been missing and we just could not find him. And I told her a story before about how I helped find someone. And she she's known about me being psychic for a very long time. I validated things to her for her. Uh, over, you know, the time we'd known each other. So she has no doubt in my ability. She has less doubt in my abilities <laughs> as a psychic than I have faith in myself. <laughs> and if you don't have a friend like that, not even when it comes to you being psychic, but if you have any type of talent and you don't have a friend that believes in you more than you believe in yourself, you need to find new friends. <laughs> but anyway, Moran had... Ha- still to this day has a lot more faith in my psychic abilities than I do. And she called me and I'm in Hereford. She's in Amarillo. It's about 45 minutes away. That's important. And tells me that Timmy, she can't find him. She can't find Timmy. She's calling, texting, nothing. 
she's trying, she's trying, she's trying, and she can't get, she can't get a hold of Timmy, and it's not like him, and so I tell her, okay, um, she, <laughs> she says, just do whatever you gotta do, <laughs> you know what I'm asking you to do, help us find Timmy, <sighs> and she's telling me this, some of these things she's telling me through phone calls, some of these things she's telling me through text, and I know what it's time for. I come to my room, I turn off all the lights, I turn on my salt lamp, that's not really important or influent, that's not substantive to me being psychic, but I like turning on my salt lamp because it adds this really nice orange glow, it helps me just find peace and meditate so that I can shut off my my logical thinking brain that views things through the logical window and I can try and access my my metaphysical uh, parapsychological existence and I, I start meditating I close my eyes I lay in bed I'm starting to do my breathing exercises I'm starting to meditate I'm starting to clear my mind and then slowly and surely visions of excuse me what i wouldn't know are visions of where jimmy is <laughs> are visions of where timmy is so i i tell i start texting her what i see i see a bunch of trees like kind of like and then i text her kind of like the trees where you used to live and she'd moved at this point but kind of like the trees near your old house and I'm seeing a railroad and I'm seeing kind of like just Timmy's in different places everywhere. He's just kind of in different places. Every five minutes he's in a different place. I'm seeing the the boulevard and I'm seeing like uh, bars or I, I'm telling her all the things that I'm seeing. Like uh, I'm explaining to her that you know, I feel like he's in the area where she used to live and I'm seeing trees kind of near the golf course, near the country club where she used to live. And I'm seeing, I'm going down the list of just telling her everything I see and telling her that, you know, I'm, I'm sad and I, I'm, I don't know where I am kind of, sort of, but nothing straight looking and, and then I tell her that I'm I'm okay. And then I don't get anything else. And about an hour later, after sending these messages to her, she calls me and she says, we found Timmy. And I said, where was he? Because I had to know <laughs> if what I was saying was accurate. And she tells me, Timmy was drunk driving and then I immediately connected not knowing where I was or things being fuzzy and blurry to the drunk driving and then she says he was at the corner of 6th and Western in Amarillo and so I pulled up 6th and Western on Google Google Maps and I shit you not <laughs> I have screenshots of everything I wouldn't I, I don't think I for confidentiality and privacy issues, I'm not going to post them because, you know, I'd have to ask Moran's permission and all of that other good stuff. And, and you know, this is where faith, <laughs> this is where faith is going to have to inform your decision based on this story because I take screenshots of everything and I'm, I'm looking at the map and I shit you not, at the corner of 6th and Western, there is are it, it's in the area where she used to live she used to live on southwest 10th street south east southwest 10th which is not that far from where they found him it's four blocks <laughs> four blocks from where they found him and there is a golf course in the area there's a park in that area there's trees everywhere the type of trees that I saw that were like evergreen trees lined up that showed me that it was, you know, intentionally put along the side of a road somewhere or in a lawn for landscaping purposes. 
you know, that's what it looks like at the country club. I told her that I saw a railroad and between Moran's old house and where they found Jimmy, there's a railroad on the other side of that. So it was kind of like I was seeing visions of a circle around where they would find him. I saw Moran's own, uh, the area near Moran's old house. I saw the train tracks. I saw a park and I saw the golf course and the trees. The trees kind of like where her old house was. So if you look at, if you look at Google Maps, it kind of forms all the things that I saw kind of forms this circle around 6th and Western where they found Jimmy. And he'd been, you know, driving to bars and drunk driving. And he was just in a bad place. He he really was. And, you know, they got him some help. And he was taken care of. But that that's one of the receipts that I have. And to this day, I tell the story. And I didn't tell it so well here. Because I can't really show you all the receipts. <laughs> I show other people the screenshots I have and I'll read them out perfectly and all of that other good stuff. And then I show them the screenshot of the Google map. Maybe I'll post the Google map on my, oh, excuse me, on my Instagram after I post this episode. After you listen to this episode, go to my Instagram and find a screenshotted map. <laughs> It'll show exactly what I'm talking about. And it's one of the receipts I have saved in my phone for when people just think I'm bullshitting. And yeah, I I knew where Jimmy was. I knew where Jimmy was going to be found. And right down that area, down 6th Street, there are bars. Every, every, every building, oh, basically on 6th Street is a bar. <laughs> it's connected to the old Highway 66 in Amarillo. So there are bars all up and down 6th street and yeah that's where they found the cops found jimmy and oh that's where the cops found timmy and yeah that's one of the stories that i have for you um second and this is probably going to be the last story receipt wise and then i'll post some later i'll post some more later but i had a dream while I, while I was still in high school, mind you, my grandpa is a Mormon. He became a Mormon a few years back. Um, some missionaries knocked on his door and it's, it's a weird story because the way he tells it, he says that, um, he'd lost his faith and all of this other stuff. He knew he hadn't lived a good life because he left my grandma because he was cheating on my grandma with his white lady. And then he married the white lady and he just felt like he'd lost his grace and he was trying to get right with the Lord or whatever for all the stuff he'd done. And, you know, at around that same time, there were missionaries who prayed the night before to God to show them where in town to look for new parishioners for the church, new people to go to the church. They were trying, they were on, they were missionaries. They're trying to recruit people or whatever. So in the in the prayers, I guess the God tells these missionaries to go to the trees in Hereford, and in Hereford, the nice side of town, all of the all of the streets in the nice side of town in Hereford start with, you know, a the the alf letters of the alphabet A through R, and each letter is the name of a type of tree. So we have Aspen, Beach, uh, Cypress, <laughs> like literally Douglas, Fir. I'm telling y'all, it's like trees and shit. He, my grandpa lives on Hickory in the nice side of town. So it's H and he lives in the 300 block of H <laughs> and my the, the missionaries um, got that message from God, apparently, to go to the trees in Hereford. Go to the trees. And so they started... <laughs> they started on the 300 block of Hickory. And it wasn't very long until they got to my grandpa's house. Because my grandpa's house is near... 
our subconscious is what comes alive whenever we sleep. And our subconscious oftentimes allows the delivery of psychic messages to come through because our subconscious is in type A. Our subconscious is where our creativity lies. Creative people have just an easier access to their subconscious and their non-logical, non-A plus B equals C half of their brain. So, when you're asleep, all of that to give you the sense of what kind of man my grandpa was. He's one of those older, Hispanic, Latinx men who works and goes home. <laughs> Minds his business, takes care of what he has to take care of. He's you know, just like... Our culture's older men... Are, have been beaten down by life because they grew up with nothing and they had to make it. So, you know, my grandpa is a colorful man in his story and what he's overcome. But he's a very quiet person. He doesn't speak much if he's not in his element. You know, he has a few friends here and there. Um, he's probably got a few girlfriends here and there. <laughs> but <laughs> that's none of my business. But very, very quiet. He lost his mother when he was young. He has uh, brothers that were also young when they lost both their parents. So when my my grandpa's mom and dad died, he was just barely 16 or 17. He dropped out of school so that way he could support the family with one of my older uncles. So that way the younger uncles could continue to go to school and... That's an example of the kind of man my grandpa is. He's just very... He did what he had to do. <laughs> he was a survivor, you know? And he lost his mom. So my mom never got to meet her. I sure as hell never got to meet her. I don't even know what she looks like. Except... And, 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 until the day that I had this dream. Um, you know, my my grandparents... Both of them, when they were young, they had to quit school to work. And my grandmother, Sally, she stopped going to school seventh grade because she had to go travel with my great-grandparents to pick, pick fruit and pick vegetables across the country so that they, you know, could make money. And um, my grandfather, he also did the, that type of work. Um, very soul crushing discipline making work and so he lost his mother young I would not know what his mother looks like as I stated a second ago until I have this dream in this dream me and my cousin Gabriel and my cousin Gabriel's a year and a half younger than me he is a little bit shorter than me me and my cousin Gabriel, well, to me, he looks like my cousin Gabriel, but to everyone else, me and my cousin Gabriel look like my grandpa and one of my grandpa's brothers, but just younger. So me and my cousin Gabriel are running through this house and we are in a house that I've never been in before, but it looks familiar to me, almost as if I've built the house in my dream out of the memory of the backgrounds of pictures that I've seen of my grandpa's youth, but I, I, I never really got to see any pictures. There's no pictures of my great-grandparents. There's no pictures of the house that they grew in, but I don't know how I created this house that I'd never been in in this dream because your brain can't do that. Your brain can't do that. So I knew it was a message, but I just didn't know what the message was yet until I'm running through this house, and to me... Gabriel looks like Gabriel, but to everyone else, we look like my grandpa. I look like my grandpa. My cousin Gabriel looks like one of my uncles, one of my, my grandpa's brothers. And and then we get to the kitchen and we're running. And then this older Mexican lady in a pink mumu is yelling at us as we try and run out the back door. 
and I'm explaining this lady to my mother, and my mother says, you need to tell your grandpa this story. And I can explain to him perfectly describing what the the rags that hung on the stove look like and what the circular tin looking pictures that were held and hung on the wall look like and how everything was decorated I could tell him what the house looked like I could tell him all these things which is strange because normal dreams you don't remember very much after them and the longer you've been awake after a dream the less and less you remember so I could tell him all of these things and I could tell him about this woman. And then I told my grandpa that the pink muumuu that this lady was wearing is what she was buried in. Mind you, I'm 14 or 15. I don't remember when I had this dream. Or when I told... I was still in high school. Maybe I'm 14, 15, 16. And I'm telling my grandpa the story. And lo and behold... Unbeknownst to us, my great-grandmother, Isabel, my grandpa's mom, was buried in a pink muumuu. And my grandpa, it just, his face, I'd never seen him make a face, I'd never really seen him show emotion, but he, he looked deep into my eyes like he was trying to see what my soul was. <laughs> because <laughs> I... I could tell him all these things that I would never have known because of this dream, which is, uh, was, which was to me a dream, but is now what I know to be a premonition. And yeah, that is another instance where I can say that my psychic abilities sent me whatever I needed to tell my grandpa. My grandpa got whatever message he needed from me describing the dream. I will assume now as someone who is seasoned and understands what spirit, uh, what their goal is when they come try and come through to us. My grandpa knew from that dream, from me telling him that dream, that he knew that his mother, who I never got to meet, who my mom never got to meet, who my grandmother, his wife, his first wife, who bore his children, never got to meet, knew about us, was watching over us, was still very much a part of our lives. Because, you know, I'd assume now that I guess my grandpa, because he lost his mother young, probably, you know, wonders all the time if, you know, wow, I wonder what mom would think about this, or I wonder what mom would think about that. I wonder if mom knows that these grandkids exist. I wonder if mom knows that my daughter looks just like her. Like, that <laughs> That was what my grandfather got from me just telling him the story. And my grandfather was raised Catholic. <laughs> but, you know, he, he became a Mormon. But the moment I told him that story, he was he, it was like he was never Mormon. He was Catholic again. <laughs> Because he got, you know, all the things he needed from that story and the the describing of the dream. And those are two instances. The Timmy thing and the grandpa, great-grandma dream thing. Funny side note, every day on my way to work and every day on my way home from work, I cross by, I pass by a cemetery. And at the corner of the cemetery where there's a stop sign where every single day I stop and I turn towards the street where I go home, my great-grandmother Isabel and my great-grandfather Benito are actually buried right there at the corner, <laughs> one or two spaces away from the stop sign. So every day, you know, I get, I, I, I pass by where they were buried. And that's just another, you know, weird thing to sprinkle on this episode but uh, sometimes I'll you know stop at that stop sign and before I drive you know to make the turn to go home I will say something like you know hey grandma <laughs> or hey grandpa just like out of nowhere <laughs> in the middle of singing a song I'll be like do 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 hi grandma do 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 <laughs> and then carry on with my life but I've never seen physically these people, but I know that I that they 
that they watch over me. I know that every single day when I pass by them, I I feel safer knowing that in the way that they couldn't get to know me while I was a baby, while I was still alive, whatever time that God would have given them had they, had they lived long enough to see me, they... You know, they see me every day. <laughs> they see me every day when I go to work, every day when I come home. And when I come home, sometimes I'll say thank you because I know that I made it home safe because of them. But it's also because I'm not just psychic, but I'm also really religious. So I guess that's my weird religious, psychic, silly way of, of acknowledging, you know, the two of them. Anyway, I have so many more stories to tell you guys about that relate to receipts <laughs> that can prove or just justify my psychic abilities. But this is already in recording before editing. This is already an hour and 27 minutes, <laughs> an hour and 27 minutes. And I still have to edit this before I go to bed so I can post it for y'all. Because y'all deserve it. Because y'all been so patient with me. And y'all are great. And I love y'all and all of that other good stuff. So, I'm going to cut this episode short right here. Psychic Part 2. The Psychic Episode Part 2 will be coming to you when it comes to you. I will, I've not forgotten. <laughs> I will make it, I will make it my priority to make sure that you get part two of the oh I'm, that wasn't me farting that was i i have this big jug of water because i'm always thirsty <laughs> um i will make it a priority to make sure you get the rest of these receipts in an upcoming episode soon very soon if not this this weekend maybe i'll finish this on friday i don't know <laughs> But I will make sure that y'all get the rest of this, these stories. Because one, they're interesting. And two, I'm tired of y'all calling me crazy or thinking that I don't care. <laughs> and three, I'm tired of things happening in the world and going wrong because I've refused and neglected to post this specific episode. So, thank you very much. Y'all are great. Register to vote if you still can. If not... <sighs> Why the fuck not? <laughs> and make sure that you vote November 3rd to save our democracy. It's important, guys. Oh, water. Oh, let me tell y'all something. If y'all want to buy me something for Christmas, <laughs> send water or tea. I will pick water or tea any day over a Coke. I, I hate Coke. Water, tea, that's my, that's my judge. Anyway, so, you know, it wasn't long until they found my grandpa's house because my grandpa, the 300 block of Hickory, he doesn't live very many houses away from the start of the street. So these missionaries, the day that my grandpa is, you know, getting ready to find God and doesn't know what church to go to, and the day after these missionaries pray to God before bed to send, like, you know, to ask them where to find open hearts that would be accepting of the Mormon message to go to the Mormon church here in town. And <laughs> apparently God, allegedly, God told them to go, what? I'm a good Christian. Mormons, I don't know. They are Christian because they believe in the teachings of Christ, but they have different testaments. All I'm going to say is God sent them to that block. They met my grandpa, the rest is history. He's a Mormon. He's very conservative. He, you know, he's kind of, he's a very hard worker. I will always say that about my grandfather. He's a very hard worker. No matter the mistakes he's made in life, he's always, you know, been a, a, a hard worker. He's always tried to provide for, you know, his family in a way. Or he takes care of us now whenever we need something that we just, we have a rock and grandpa's our rock. We, and that's why he works so hard because he wants to make sure he can take care of all of us. He has four kids, 11 grandchildren. <laughs> Most of us are of the age where we, you know, might need help from then to there. And I think personally I'm my grandpa's favorite because I've proven to him that I don't 
want anything from him. I don't need anything from him. I just want a relationship with my grandpa. <laughs> you know, like the I've I've done well for myself. I I've done well for myself. I work hard. My grandpa sees that. He knows that I don't need anything from him. I just want a relationship with him, just like every other grandkid. My grandfather probably wasn't like most grandfathers because I didn't get to spend a lot of time with him because he was always working. So I used to go to church with him, to his church. I'm not a Mormon, but I went to that church with my grandpa just so I could spend time with my grandpa. And all of that just to... With that being said, we've officially made it to the end of Ask Fonzie Anything. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this entire episode. If you want to hear more, I have tons of episodes posted already, and I'll post new episodes whenever I want. No, but seriously though, usually Mondays, and when the show starts growing, I'll start releasing episodes twice a week or something. If you like the show, it is available almost everywhere podcasts can be heard, including Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Make sure you add, like, subscribe, or follow me on my social media profiles. It's at Fonzie Graziano on everything, so you don't have to worry about missing an episode. Make sure and send me DMs to request episode discussion topics. You can write in to me if you need advice. I've been told I'm an infinite spring of wisdom. I can definitely give you an outside perspective. I'll tell you what I would do anyway. And who knows, your letter might be the one I answer in the next episode. Uh, If you like, you can directly support the podcast. There are links in the bio to my Patreon and Anchor Direct. Or you can just buy one of my books. My first book, Glory, is available in print on Amazon.com and Walmart.com. The ebook is available on Kindle. And there is an audiobook available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes.com, I think. But don't quote me on that. Also, my second book, A Raindrops and Other Lullabies, which was originally due for release earlier this year, but it's been pushed back twice due to the coronavirus. It'll definitely be out before the end of the year, though. Uh, If you go to my website, not only can you download and read PDF previews of both books, but you can also listen to a sample of the audiobook of Glory, and if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get an exclusive updates on what I'm working on and promo codes and sales and discount info. And last but not least, I just want to remind y'all to be a rainbow in somebody's cloud. Be kind to yourself and others, unless they talk to you crazy. And wash your fucking hands and wear your goddamn mask. I want to go to the bar. We'll get through this together. (laughs) Thank you for listening. I think you're pretty cool. I don't care what they say about you. Bye. (laughs)